12 meeting of GOL to order on February 12th. It is uh, 1037 in the morning and we're being recorded by Amherst Media. Um, before we start, just a quick look at the agenda, which I hope people have in front of them. Um, we have a couple of items I think we can get through quickly, uh, two and three. I think we do have an issue that we need to talk about in terms of how we're going to handle bylaws um, going forward. I think that's something we, we need to discuss. But I really do want us to get to items seven and eight, um, the uh, GOL proposal for committee restructuring, and I would like to get at least to the uh, uh, public ways request. So um, I'm not sure how much we're going to spend on bylaws today, but we'll decide that obviously as a group. Um, and then Evan had kindly put something in our uh, packet, which I'm going to hold off to item 12. So item 12 essentially is item 6. Um, but uh, so I'm going to, as always, reorder a bit. So the first item on the agenda is to discuss the revisions we made last time to the finance committee charge. Um, it occurs to me now <coughs> that maybe we really didn't need to discuss this. All I needed to do was send it to the finance committee chair. But um, you have it in your packet. and. Um, so the, I think the first item of business is to decide whether we have any more discussion on those revisions, which uh, Mandy has done. And if not, then my task is simply to send it on to the finance chair, have them look at it, and the hope is that we can present it then to the next, to the council at the next meeting. Do we need to look at this anymore? Is the can revised finance committee Can I just charge? mention one thing? Sure. So uh, most of it is what we discussed last, no last meeting. The I moved one bullet item from investigations and annual audit from that bullet down to reports because it was really the report section. I just wanted to point out that I did that um, since it was report findings to the town council. So I felt that probably better falls under reports. So okay. that's one change we didn't discuss last week. Are we okay. voting to recommend this to the council this week? Is uh, that the goal? Actually, that's correct. We did okay. not vote last time. So we do need to vote if we are ready to vote on it. So actually, we do need to discuss briefly, and that may be the, if that's the only change, I think we're ready to vote. But I, I want to give you all a moment to uh, look at it and to ponder. But yes, we need to vote on this. And um, if I take it, if the Finance Committee has some concerns, it'll have to come up at the Council meeting. Evan. So two things. One is just helping my failing memory. Um, Andy had made some suggestions on things she would like to see included. Yep. Are they all now captured in this? I don't remember. I don't know. I remember him being here. I remember him talking. <laughs> I don't remember what was said or decided. Um, we have the minutes, but I don't either. Right, I guess um, it's just six, so. Uh, but no, it, it, I don't think they're going to be as, as much help. My me recollection is that the issue seemed to revolve around how broad the uh, mandate of the Finance Committee Construed. And I'm not sure that that can really be decided by this document, but um, that was at least one takeaway, the sense that perhaps Andy and the Finance Committee might have a more a broader sense of the mandate, and uh, does the charge reflect that or should it reflect that? So I think the change we made, the, that added bullet point under budgets and appropriations, that last one, yeah. um, he had recommended that it was just make recommendations on proposed bylaws, blah, blah, blah. And after discussion, we added the words upon referral from the council. So we were trying to limit it, and yeah. he wanted it even broader. So I think yeah. we've added in. I think he was OK with that in the end, um, but that was the change we made from his recommendation was to require for that bullet point referral from the council instead of just that they do it. And then, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the only other just super minor thing regard to the measures we'll have. Right. So we can make that change. Sorry. Right. So if that issue is raised at the council meeting, um, we can present our rationale. Hopefully Andy and the committee will be satisfied by it, but there are obviously four other members, and who knows what might come up. 
Otherwise, it looks like we're set. Is that Mandy? Okay, please, the motion. I move to recommend the council rescind the current finance committee bylaw and in its place, send a charge, not bylaw, and in its place adopt the finance draft charge that was presented at this meeting as revised. So please revise it. A second. So we have a motion. Is that, uh, do we need to repeat it? I think you're okay, thank you. Um, so we have a motion that's been seconded. Any more discussion? So I'm gonna immediately call the question. All those in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. Aye. Um, so we have four in favor and one absent. Thank you. Second item I wanted to deal with uh, next, partly because we have the sponsor president, partly because it's actually relatively short, um, is a bylaw that's being sponsored by by Evan, but it does raise the question of how we're gonna deal with bylaws when they come to us. But um, I'm wondering if you wanted to deal with this first and then go into the larger discussion, or do you wanna have the larger discussion first? I think some of the other bylaws we have on the agenda do pose some serious challenges as to how we're going to proceed. Um, this one I don't think does, and that may be a mistake on my part. So uh, my suggestion is let's uh, look at um, the container amendment to Amherst Open Container Bylaw and see what we want to do with it. Um, and then I think we need to have a discussion about the other bylaws and how they want to proceed. But I'm open to doing it the other way. I mean, it kind of seems weird to consider before we discuss how we want to proceed. At the same time, I'm willing to <laughs> go ahead yeah, with I this one. I feel like this one's so basic. Right, that it's, um, it's I would just have one question for the sponsor if we're going to consider this one Let's immediately. Consider it, and then we'll go on to the larger discussion. And maybe um, so. Yes, go ahead with your question. Is that a telesized language similar to language that is used in other bylaws for this purpose? Like, or do we actually need a town attorney opinion that we can do this? Which I hope not, but I, that's all I've got. So as we were having that conversation, I pulled up Hadley's bylaw because I had a feeling that would be useful. And so I'm going to read the last clause in Hadley's bylaw unless a permit therefore has previously been secured from the select board. Yes. <laughs> so it's identical except swapping out select board for board of license commissioners and that language was intentionally pulled from Hadley because in theory it's already gone through attorney general review and approval um, and has been in implementation and working there. Um, and so if you look at Northampton's, which I don't expect you did, theirs is much more complicated. They essentially have a separate provision in their bylaw that basically says for these particular public areas, you can get a permit and here's the process. And it was just, that to me was very complex. Mm -hmm. And I liked sort of the simplicity of Hadley's that just said, this is prohibited unless you get a permit and it's up to them to decide. Um, so we could send this to a, the attorney. Uh, to Wait, me, it's, it's straightforward. <laughs> Um, and modeled on our neighbor to the west. I think it does, again, as Mandy pointed out, doing this one first, um, but it raises the question of any bylaw, given that we are not legal experts um, and do, are not conversant with mass general law in particular. Um, whether with any bylaw, we feel it always has to go to attorney review. That's time consuming. Um, it also puts us at the mercy of, of the lawyers and um, we're not their only client. And I think we've had some experience in the past where we've had to wait and wait and wait. So I don't know the answer to this. Um, here it seems pretty straightforward, pretty clear. Um, my thoughts. Um, Mandy, any thoughts? So I asked that question because um, I was curious 
weather tracked language that has essentially already gone through either in the city, probably someone else's attorney review, or in towns, they always have to go to the AG before the changes happen. Um, and so if it's already been through that and this language pretty much tracks that, I'm comfortable saying it's actionable, which is yeah. sort of that attorney review, um, versus another bylaw potentially that hasn't ever, you know, that's completely novel, you know, that you can't point to anywhere in the Commonwealth that has done it, um, for example. Um, but but something like this that the next door neighbor has pretty much this exact language. I'm comfortable just doing the clear, consistent, and actionable now. Because I do think it's clear, and I don't know what it would be un inconsistent with, but. <laughs> the chair could reach out. Um, we could move ahead with this, and I think you should, is my opinion. But the chair could reach out um, informally through call and, and ask the attorneys what best practices are. Because um, again, it's always dangerous to react to an attorney what the best practices are. It usually involves their services. Um, but um, I could do that if you think it's appropriate. It would just say, you know, we're only doing the bylaws. Um, what is the best practice? And that manner suggests makes sense. If you already have bylaw in front of you or the team has gone through the, the process and it's been in existence for whatever number of years and you're making a slight change, um, to it or making an addition to it um, that doesn't seem to raise any obvious uh, legal issues, um, we really need to go through this uh, legal review process. So I'm thinking I can do that if you think that's a good idea um, and just see what I can learn um, if I'm if I'm wrong, I'm go back to it. What are best practices then, you know, um, what, what do they say or the practice? Reservations, concerns, Evan? Looks like you have a thought. I, I, I'm not, I'm not completely following. I, are you particularly talking about um, this particular addition to this bylaw, or are you talking more generally what are best practices when committees review bylaws? The latter. The latter? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a good question. And again, I you know, so when, when Mandy Joe and I put together our failed campaign finance bylaw back in the summer, that was one where we proactively sought attorney opinion before we introduced it because it did things that no as Mandy Joe said, it in some ways modeled Northampton, but in other ways built on Northampton and mm -hmm. did completely new things mm -hmm. and also had different numbers and that was something that was a com level of complexity that we needed attorney opinion on. Um, I, I, I feel like this is not. No, I agree. No, I agree with you. So I guess, I guess I'm raising a larger issue uh, prematurely. So uh, we have before us a uh, proposed amendment to a bylaw. The only thing I notice is that therefore should have an E. Um, at least that's how I spell it. Um, but that may be me. Yeah? I have never seen therefore without an E. Mm -hmm. I'm also not a lawyer. Um, in Hadley's bylaw, it's spelled without an E, well, we know in Hadley, right? and uh, but and I didn't know if that was an error. <laughs> during one time in bylaw review, <laughs> during one time in bylaw review, I, um, you know, very confidently said we needed to add an E to one of the therefores in our current bylaws, and both Jeff and Bob said no, that's not the type of therefore that has an E. And, All right. and so I, uh, there, I trusted their legal we minds. The clerk of the council, who so we do, have, we do have an attorney on this committee that maybe can let us know uh, when, when uh, the, e the e legal e council has a different way of spelling things. So, so I, I am not speaking as an attorney at giving any legal advice, but, can't afford it anyway. but <laughs> I would not put an E on that one. You would not. All right, fine. So it's, it's in excellent shape. So we are going to, I would entertain a motion. I was actually just going to search for our bylaws to make, to see how we used them, because generally in legal, this type of therefore doesn't get an E. I can't tell I you why. <laughs> right, but I was just going to do a bylaw search, yeah, but, okay. but you answered that question that yeah, our current no, bylaws I, don't have the E, no, so, yeah. It was yeah. embarrassing to go to the bylaw review, and I would have that bylaw. <laughs> 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 
Well, if Bob Ritchie can't do it, he definitely, oh, okay. you know that you're in the wrong. So, okay. Can I make a motion? <laughs> yes, please. I will so I, a I'll move to declare the amendment to the Amherst open container bylaw clear, consistent, and actionable. And then we have a second, has seconded. I think we can move directly to a vote. All <laughs> uh, is there discussion? No? There's no discussion? Okay. Um, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Who signifies by saying aye. 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 All right, no one's objected. So four zero again with one absent to um, move this along. Thank you. Now, next in item, we have a resolution. Um, and I would like to go to that. Yes, question. Can I ask the, the committee to just, um, normally you're good about sending reports before a council meeting, but for bylaws, it takes a little bit of extra coordination because they need to be posted okay. and so forth. Sometimes there are extra steps. So I'll you just, mean these in advance of, right. Speak to my staff, thank you. Okay. All right, yes, Ellen. Thank you, Athena, for bringing that up since that slipped my mind. This has not been posted on the town bulletin board, correct? And it needs posted 14 days before, before final passage, before right? Final passage. Which I think my, my intention was to be on February 24th. Unclear to me the the when you brought it, it was not declared a first reading on the agenda, but the was. but the president said it was a first reading. Um, it was for the automatic referral, so we might be able to have the technical first reading on the twenty fourth with a posting now for the fourteen days. Okay. But that's what I mean when we're talking about bylaws. It takes a little bit of yeah. extra. I have a report as chair of CRC okay. on this. Um, I told you I would report. So CRC at today's meeting voted unanimously with one absent to sponsor this resolution okay. as a committee. CRC is the official sponsor. Okay. As your practices go through whereas by whereas. Do you feel this is necessary? Do you want to do that? Um, then we are simply interested in clear, consistent, and actionable. Um, at all, Madam Clear, clear and Consistent. CRC has looked at it and they seem happy with it. Uh, one of the sponsors of it has obviously looked at it carefully. Um, so I just need a guidance from my colleagues. Do you want to go through this whereas by whereas? No. There's one no. Um, <laughs> any other thoughts? Or do you just want to declare it clear, consistent, actionable? Or do you want to take a few moments to read it? So, sorry. I read it. I read it. <laughs> you read it. Don't worry. I, 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 had, a, it. I had a question yes. um, Absolutely. with regard to, and I guess maybe this is clear and consistent I, I, I'm yep. with the organization. Forward. So there are four bills. Well, two bills, but there's, you know, they have counterparts in the House and Senate that this resolution is meant to support. And then two of them are introduced in the sixth whereas, and then the other two are introduced like way down below in the, I'm not counting, probably like 10th whereas, 
and I was sort of confused about, but there didn't, the, the space in between them, I didn't necessarily understand. I guess I was curious why the bills weren't introduced as one whereas clause towards the end before we resolve to support them, why there was like a, and maybe there was a reason, I just didn't Is pick up on it. Fair enough. So this came as a copy of what Northampton mm -hmm. um, adopted, which I tried to change for the right names, for example, who are representative and all is, and got rid of some dates because apparently Northampton did this a while ago and some hearings have already happened. Um, I think it was because the one whereas that introduces the right to counsel bills then, un, you know, some of that is the explanation for the needs for that are above that one and then below that introduction. So starting in like the sixth whereas or something, one, two, three, four, five, six, the seventh whereas is sort of talking about um, the eviction records and how that can do it. And then the last whereas talks about the bill that would address that one. So since they're two separate bills with two separate issues, they're mentioned and discussed sort of, it, it, it could easily be two separate resolutions and because they're two separate items, but they're in one resolution and so it's talking about the one bill, that the one issue, then that bill, and then the other issue, and then that bill, and then the whereas is about both of them. Evan. And then the second thing I had from a consistency perspective was in the whereas that introduces the first set, the first bill that um, I didn't quite understand. Oh, I guess we did it in both. Sorry. Um, do we typically put the sponsor names in? I wasn't sure. We've yeah. we passed the. We've become like a resolution factory. Um, mm -hmm. And and I and I. Right. And, and no, that wasn't a critique. I'm just saying we've done a lot of these, and I couldn't remember. And had I had more time, I would have gone back and looked. But do we typically put the sponsors of the bills? in the whereas clause. We, okay. we have in at least one other resolution because okay. I yeah. went back and looked. I don't know if the row, I think I might have looked at the, the row act row resolution had, had it in there. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, the, the, on, the only other thing oh, is um, that, I, that I sort of picked up from a consistency perspective. You can tell I'm back in the semester in grading papers. Yes, um, <laughs> is so there's, there seems to be going back and forth between just saying here's the bill by this person, the bill filed by this person, and the bill sponsored by this person. Oh, okay. um, or, and so I wasn't sure it, how, so it, it says uh, in the first one, um, the S19 by Senator Sal Di Domenico, yeah. and then the next one, and by them, and then, but the next one says filed by, and I wasn't sure if Sal filed it, and then, and then when you go down to the other ones. Well, the first one, the first one was refiled. Okay. And so I think that the last one is just been filed, so that would be filed. Okay. Um, and then I think it's it's down, mm -hmm. and then they say sponsored by, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm having trouble finding. And so I wasn't I wasn't again I wasn't sure if these were inconsistencies yeah, or if they were intentional. This also doesn't matter. It was just one of those things that I picked up on. That's kind of our job, to deal with stuff that doesn't matter. So. <laughs> Sorry. I couldn't resist. Oh. We'll let Evan have a moment to compose himself. However, he does raise a, a legitimate question, which is, is there a difference, and to which we don't have the answer, and I don't know if the sponsor or the sponsor representative would be able to make a claim or not. So. 
I don't think the answer is you're going to go. I don't really care. I mean, I can make that change as chair. Well, yeah. Something that's filed that's filed with the committee. Right. Mm. Sounds good. I like it. I like it. Okay. Uh, since we don't have any knowledge base here upon which to criticize it, I think we're going to leave it as it is. Um, it clearly doesn't affect actionability. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. The Caterpillar rules. All right. Any other observations, thoughts, concerns? I want to thank you, Evan, for your clear and, and, and sharp eye. Um, so I think we're ready to uh, entertain a motion. If someone would like to make it. Uh, I'll just be the motion person today. Um, I move to declare the resolution in support of the right to counsel, et cetera. Um, <laughs> clear, consistent, and actionable. Is there, and there's a second, Pat, second. Uh, I see no need for further discussion. All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand and saying aye. 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 Again, the vote is four zero. Soon to be two absent, perhaps. Uh, the chair wasn't planning for this. I think the chair is. Where's that gavel? She, the gavel is gone. Uh, this is terrible. How can I run a meeting with that gavel? All right. Thank you. That is. We're moving along. This is what I like to see. Um, I'm going to skip over bylaws for a moment, and I'd like to go. If that's okay. But again, I'm open to. I'd like to come back to that later in the meeting to discuss, A, generally how we're going to deal with our law bylaws and then turn our attention to the percent for our bylaw, which I think does raise some serious challenges. Um, and I'd like to go instead uh, to um, the proposal for council committee instruction. Is that okay? Because I, I, we've been sitting on this and I, my personal feeling is we really need to just put together a proposal, make an argument for it, tell the president that we're ready and then the council will have to decide what it wants to do. And so my, we've, uh, Evan's worked very hard on this. Um, we have worked very hard on trying to figure out where appointments should go. Um, I did get at OCA's meeting on Monday, we finally, uh, well, let's be polite here. We finally got some uh, comments that I think was helpful from some members of OCA uh, related to the proposal. Um, there was one counselor who would like OCA to stay in existence and be a kind of appointments committee, um, feeling that OCA has uh, certain skills that can easily be transferred. It has relationships with town manager and CPOs that other committees would have to kind of recreate. Um, worried, uh, interestingly enough, about uh, the town manager having to attend multiple meetings um, of different appointing bodies. Um, and uh, there was also, this was expressed by at least one other counselor as well in OCA, a concern about whether the same interview process would be followed if you have different committees uh, engaged in the appointments process. Um, and a second uh, counselor um, is not opposed to the appointments being shared out, but does not want to see this happen until at least July 1st. Um, so there was some concern uh, expressed by this counselor about sort of the uh, process of, 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 run, of uh, getting this started. And uh, this council preferred a delay until July 1, um, partly because they uh, were concerned about ZBA appointments, which we have not yet made, OCA has not yet made, um, and also a concern about the CAF issue. OCA is working on that, and the OCA chair may speak to that in a moment. But uh, so concerned about CAF, concerned about uh, ZBA appointments that haven't yet been made, and that the town manager will be making a whole host of appointments um, on, after uh, July 1st. Um, this council had no problem with putting outreach somewhere else, um, but did not want all appointments to go to GOL. The third counselor is president, and so uh, perhaps he will speak to his uh, concerns uh, if he wishes. But anyway, we had, I think, finally a, a fairly robust discussion, um, and these are what I could just draw from those comments. We al already have comments from other counselors, and uh, we've gone through those. Um, so what I'd like us to do, uh, I want to give Evan a moment to speak uh, about OCA. Um, I'd like us to uh, see if we can get this done, and then I would write up a report, and um, hopefully the vote is a 
to the president and then to the back of the crowd when the votes were on the agenda. Kevin, do you have any further thoughts or additions to the opening question? Yes, yeah, so uh, as you know, uh, members of OCA had felt as though they had not had an opportunity to properly weigh in on the proposal, um, which is not a sentiment I personally agree with, but um, gave the committee an opportunity in our meeting on Monday uh, to weigh in. Um, and it was very interesting because I think that in, in many ways uh, they had already weighed in on January 6th um, and seemed more supportive in January 6th than they did in the meeting on Monday. And, um, that was sort of shocking to me um, because on January 6th there was only one counselor on OCA who felt like OCA should remain. Um, and, and that sentiment wasn't necessarily uh, the same on Monday. Uh, so as, as George said, um, there was a suggestion, or we'll call it a suggestion, mm -hmm. um, that any dissolution of OCA not happen until um, July 1. And that part of that rationale that, that I don't think George covered was um, not just getting through appointments, planning board and ZBA appointments that will need to be made by June 30th and also some expected town manager appointments, um, but also the idea that um, as we just went through the planning board appointment, it was actually a decent amount of work. I think I said this in the last GOL meeting that my position on putting all appointments into GOL shifted after having gone through that planning board appointment process because it actually was a decent workload. Um, and there was some worry that in splitting CRC in two and potentially having new membership, um, CRC uh, will be in a position to sort of have to refigure itself out a little bit and to do that and then immediately say, oh, and by the way, we have some planning board and ZBA vacancies that you need to deal with before June 30th. The idea that that was, that was a lot. And so the idea was maintain OCA until those are done. And then once CR the, the new CRC, or the new, however you want to call it, has a little bit more of its footing, they could then absorb that responsibility. Um, and so that was also part of the rationale of, of waiting. Um, and also seeing if CRC felt um, they actually had the capacity to do so. I think there's some concern, and I, we saw it Monday night when it came to the comprehensive housing policy, there were even questions on that. Does CRC have the capacity to do this? Um, and that sort of uh, jarred my memory of the conversation from that, from that morning of, does CRC actually have the capacity to do these planning board and ZBA appointments? Because they can be fairly time consuming, um, and often in, in very unnecessary ways, like the fact that our technology is not really well positioned to easily allow us to assess what the applicant pool is. Um, and so that, that was part of it, this idea of maintain OCA at least through July and then assess whether it actually makes sense and maintaining OCA as a strictly appointments body. So I think the idea was move forward. This was, this was my takeaway and George can disagree if mm -hmm. it, that wasn't his. Um, it was move forward with this except for the appointments part. So split split CRC in half, TSO, CRC, but, and, and take outreach out of OCA, put it in TSO, but maintain OCA as a strictly appointments body at least through the end of June and then assess whether it makes sense, um, which was an interesting proposal. I don't actually personally know where I stand on that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think there's, there's logic to both sides of that. Um, I, I made the argument that, and so this is what George said I could speak to because I talked about this, one of my concerns. I think that to me personally, um, the town manager appointments, whether they be department head or town committees, at that point, at this point now that OCA has figured out how we assess those, which is really just our process that's very simple mm -hmm. and has really been less about our process and more about what we expect from the town manager, which she has now through sort of this iterative process of us basically saying better but, better but, mm -hmm. um, we're there with that. Yeah. And so I think they were actually, even within the suggestion that I just said was taken from a counselor on OCA, 
to maintain OCA as an appointments committee. I, I think that even within that, it would still make sense to strip department heads and town committees out and put them in TSO, because those are a very different beast. And, and I know one counselor who wanted OCA to maintain as an a, appointments committee uh, permanently um, felt like it didn't make sense to distribute appointments. That it, their appointments, you keep them together. Um, but town manager appointments are so, so, so different from counselor appoint, from council appointments. The process, the evaluation, everything is so different. So if we, I guess, throwing an additional level of complexity into this conversation about whether we wait, whether we maintain OCA as appointments temporarily, um, is also the, op the option of saying um, council appointments might stay in this committee, but it, it, there's no reason we can't take town manager appointments and put them somewhere else right now, because there's no need for OCA to continue to do that, because a big concern has been, OCA just developed this process, we've implemented it once, we already have some ideas on things we might want to tweak about it. Mm -hmm. um, there is some concern, and I share some of this concern, about if um, that process is then sent to GOL and to CRC, since they're committee processes, there's no reason that those two committees couldn't then just ignore them, or, or, and, and we spent a lot of time on that. And so um, there's complexity here um, that I think we have to consider. Yeah. Uh, and there's one other thing that now I'm trying to, s oh, um, one other suggestion on top of that, though, was that um, GOL could take liaison, because OCA was tasked with liaisons, uh, because they're a council appointment. OCA has put forth recommendation of some committees that we think should have liaisons. OCA has not spent a single second of our time talking about a process of appointing liaisons. So unlike ZBA and Planning Board, where we spent literally four months building a process and that we, we feel a little bit of ownership of and a li probably a little hesitant to just hand off, uh, we haven't done that with liaisons. And so you could take liaisons away from OCA right now with literally no impact. Um, and so this is a lot more complicated of a discussion about whether we just want to move forward with what we're recommending, whether we want to move forward with everything but appointments, whether we want to move forward with everything and some appointments, but not all. I mean, uh, there's a lot of complexity here, um, but there was a lot more resistance in OCA on Monday to the dissolution of OCA than there had been in the month prior when I, and when I last sat in this room and said, OCA is okay with this. Let me, before I go to the manager, let me just um, uh, make one point from my perspective at the same meeting. Um, my reading was there was one counselor who is opposed to the dissolution of OCA, but the other counselor um, is not opposed to the dissolution of OCA, but would like it stay the same. Right, exactly. So I feel there, there's clearly there, I think, is a sense that this is something that can be done but there was reluctance to do it immediately, and I thought the points that were made were good ones, that there might be some sense to a kind of phasing in of certain things, and I don't see why we couldn't recommend that if we decide that it makes sense, rather than just present them with an, uh, an entire plan and let's do this in the next week or next, uh, right? We could suggest a phasing in, um, and I think that would meet with the approval of at least one of the two members of OCA. I think one simply doesn't want appointment of commission, or I think wants a, a committee just for appointment. No need to apologize. So, in listening, I, I'm looking at the charges. TSO gets appointments for department heads and multiple member bodies, which it sounds like OCA might be okay with moving out more immediately. Um, that, or, or at least that the OCA chair seems that that could potentially be moved out mm -hmm. more immediately. Okay, plus, plus a few. Plus a few. Um, GOL gets under this proposal um, appointments on non-voting council liaisons, which OCA has agreed could be moved, I think, right? Um, non-voting finance committee members, which I'm not sure any of them are up this summer. Mary Lou is. One is, okay. Um, JCPC committee and budget coordinating group, which are all counselors. Um, and 
clerk of the council, council staff, town manager, if that's referred. So that's, you know, so I, I read those two and I say it, from what I just heard, OCA doesn't seem to have a real concern about either of them moving out of OCA on a more immediate basis. And so it really is just planning board and ZBA. Mm -hmm. So I guess what my recommendation would be is we move forward with a recommendation to the council to adopt these three charges as is effective immediately, except for the appointments centered in um, the CRC charge. Um, CRC right now has planning board and zoning ZBA and only planning board and ZBA. And the recommendation would be adopt all three charges as is so that we're not modifying language later. They're effective immediately except for this one bullet point on the CRC charge which would become effective July 1 um, or after ZBA and after the July, the upcoming, whatever, you know, July 1. And in the meantime, the current OCA remain in effect solely for those appointments only and to be dissolved July. And it, it, it might not be a date. <laughs> it might not be a date because if we can't, if, if because of applicant pools or something, it might be, you know, it, it, it might be something until appointments are made to replace the current vacancies or vacancies due to um, the upcoming vacancy due to term ending July 30th, something like that. Until those appointments are made, OCA remains in effect simply for those two appointments. Would that, I, it, it's a complicated motion. It could be explained easier than the language would be. Right, yeah. um, would that, on the two members that are on OCA sort of appear to satisfy this concern of we don't want to switch that that actual ZBA planning board appointment process or you know not even the process uh, I'm guessing that CRC would not necessarily go and uproot the process um, but it would also CRC is somewhat busy we'd find the time but it would allow I think OCA more time to try that process and then when they forward that process on to CRC to forward it with any potential recommendations on mm -hmm. any changes for the next year. I think as I've said, there's one member of OCA that this will not satisfy under any circumstances, but I think that the other member this would be meeting, um, I think, a number of uh, serious concerns. And I think Evan shares some of them. And I, listening, I felt I shared some of them too. So I really like this just to, to be done. Um, but phasing in my, makes sense. And it seems to be the appointments issue is the, the sort of, no one has expressed any concern or reservations about, actually there's one small exception we've talked about briefly, but no one uh, has really expressed any concern about breaking CRC into two. It seems to be that I, all the comments I've gotten, no one has said, this is a terrible idea, we should keep CRC as it is, we don't need another committee to deal with the town services. That seems to be something that everyone that I've heard from is uh, comfortable with. That there is, and I think there's a general consensus, again, this is my perspective, that appointments are, make sense to share out appointments. But there is some legitimate concern or concern about um, how they were shared out and the timing of it. And uh, I think we have a good rationale for how they're being shared out. I think Evan has presented us with a very sensible rationale. But there is then the question of, of the timing. And if we could agree, at, at least this committee, that we were open to or maybe propose, as Mandy has suggested and Evan, I think, is suggesting, a, a kind of phasing in where essentially planning board and ZBA would be held in abeyance. Um, and we have to word this, obviously, in a motion. But the idea, I think, is fairly clear but everything else could really be uh, moved. And so if the council is willing to move appointments, that that's not a big problem. We, can, we have a proposal on the table that would move most of them, and these two that are still problematic um, could be resolved hopefully by July 1. That's what I'm seeing shaping up here. But, and I think we could move to that point where we could endorse that if that's what we want to do. Um, and I 
So yeah, it's all from that Evan. So, so I, I do want to say that I was offering that as an option, not necessarily suggesting that. And I do think that's important because I'm not actually sure I could get on board with this. Could you speak to some of these? There is, there is, I mean, so, so part of this is why are we making this unnecessarily complex? Right. There's a very simple solution. We've had these proposals, we've been talking about these proposals since the end of November, early December. It's now February, so already we're, I mean, we have this idea of one-year appointments, right? That in theory should go January to January, and now we're already not making them until end of, well, I, I mean, end of February if we approve this and the president will hold, they, they won't probably even be made until March. Um, and so part of this is just, this seems unnecessarily complex. I also, I'm gonna try and word this delicately. I always feel a little hesitant about changing course and changing plans and introducing complexity due to the opposition of a single counselor. Um, all, of, all of this conversation we've had over the past 10 minutes has been from, because of one counselor. Um, I, I share some of those same reservations. I don't know that they rise to the level of needing to do what we just talked about. The other counselor who had concerns this would not address, and one member of OCA was absent. I'm not quite sure where that person stands. Mm -hmm. um, but there is some feeling we're giving a whole lot of weight to one counselor's concerns yeah. and not necessarily the other counselors. And I think it's, be again, I'm trying to say this delicately. I think it's because the counselor's concern, the counselor tends to be a very, um, one of the louder voices in the room and one of the more demanding and persistent voices in the room and there's a feeling that we need to um, address. I, think that's just I, I don't think that we give the same deference. We're not giving the same deference to the counselor who's saying all appointments in one committee for all time. I and, and, I, and, I, and I worry a little bit about saying, okay, we're gonna kind of upend what we've been talking about a little bit, make it more complex because there's a counselor who we know is gonna really fight it and when at the end of the day we just need seven I votes. Think that I, and, I, and I have some concerns uh, about that. Uh, no, I understand that, I, uh, but I think that also the concern that's been expressed by this counselor is one that I think I share, and perhaps you share to some degree, that we've just questioned as we do in planning, and that we have a process that we're very comfortable with with town manager appointments, and we could hand off tomorrow. And, and, and uh, we have another question, which is can, how can we guarantee it'll stay consistent, which is another issue. Um, we hand it off, and then who knows what they might do with it. So is there some way that we can uh, be assured that, that a process that's working fine uh, will be followed? Um, uh, but as EBA and planning do, uh, do present a three-week challenge um, for whomever takes it on, and Oak is the most experienced, and is still working on at least the EBA side of things, so it doesn't seem to me to be an unreasonable um, proposal. It happens to come from one counselor that, uh, as Evan described it, um, I won't repeat it, but um, it, it's coming from a counselor, right? But the proposal, or the, the concern is a legitimate one. Um, and I think, j overall, I get no sense that, that many share the view that appointments should just be in one committee. I think that's something that really doesn't have legs. Now, I could be wrong, but that's my sense. But the objection that was raised by the other counselor does seem to me a legitimate objection. And um, if we just ignore it and just say, you know, we're just gonna go ahead with it full steam and you guys, are, the CRC is just gonna have to figure it out. Um, and the CRC may also know on the other end and say, wait a minute, you know, given what's on our plate, um, you know, we really wouldn't mind a little help. I mean, if you guys could hang in there for a couple more months and get this sorted out, um, that would make our job easier. So I think there's a way forward that's a compromise that meets, I think, a legitimate concern and doesn't derail what I see as the larger goal of dividing these, these committees and dividing up appointments. So most of what we want to accomplish could be accomplished at the next council meeting. And the only thing that would be delayed would be bringing the planning board. And it seems to have some sense to delay that given where we're at on, on OCA right now. And I think the OCA chair would probably agree that he may not. Um, so I understand the concern about, you know, having one voice sort of dominating the conversation, um, but we know that that sometimes does is what happens. Um, but here I think definitely it's a legitimate concern about, I'm one week out, your thoughts. Well, I, 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 in my head I'm echoing, you asked when do you let one voice 
um, dominate uh, a decision. And I feel like sometimes that one voice, even though it can be a voice that's hard to listen to at times, mm -hmm. does carry some information that has Absolutely. to make you Absolutely. look at this and say, hey, wait a minute. Um, so I, I feel like this is a compromise that I think would be a good one for planning board and well, zoning board. Let's see, what do you feel? I mean, would you be willing to take this on maybe next month and, and have a degree of the planning board uh, appointment, given all the other things that you're trying to do? I mean, I don't control your emotion and experience, but when you said this is a truly demanding job, and how do you feel Please about say no. taking that on um, right now? <laughs> so, yeah, um, I, I don't know whether CRC, frankly, looking at stuff. I think when transportation removes, maybe I'll feel a little differently. Um, and maybe when I'm not looking at a proposal we heard today from the town staff for massive revisions of the zoning bylaw over the next year, along with master plan update, where that will require multiple yeah. meetings in the evening to hold hearings jointly with the planning board. Um, I, frankly, I, I'm not sure how this will play out over the course of a year. Um, I think as CRC's chair and looking at agendas, I would love the, <laughs> the um, leeway given if we don't have to do this immediately. Um, if we did, we'd find a way, um, but um, just giving OCA one more shot at another one or two sets of these to really figure out and have recommendations on the process and is it working, is it not, I think would be very valuable to it coming into CRC versus them having done it once and CRC saying, okay, well, we'll go at it again um, versus having multiple experiences. Um, you know, I, I realize the, the burden it puts on those five counselors, assuming they would remain the same for the six months, right. essentially serving on an extra committee then um, you know, is it right to put that burden on them instead of us CRC people? <laughs> That's of course, you know, I, I, I'm okay with it. It saves me work, you know, but, but I do think there is a value to letting the five counselors that have been through now an appointment process twice, revamped it once, looking to get a better process so that when it comes to CRC, it is better and, and CRC has time to figure out how to get it into an agenda instead of facing now two ZBA openings, planning board coming up with a, potentially a third ZBA in June, something like that. So you know, two will, planning boards in June, at least two ZBAs now, essentially. And, and then technically all three current associate members of the ZBA are up in June. Yeah, so. so let me play devil's advocate for just a moment. Um, and, and have you defend to me the, the larger argument that we want to put appointments in committees that are closer to the actual appointment, which I mean, I thought that was a, 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 a well, devil's advocate would say, you know, let's just have a separate body that deals with all appointments. In other words, why should CRC be given the task of this at all? Um, well, the argument is why, because they, they deal with planning and zoning issues, so they're closest to the ground on this. So they would be an the appropriate member. But if someone challenges that and says, well, you know, well, anybody can do this. Why should CRC? And CRC's got a huge workload anyway. So what? How can we? How would one defend the argument that um, that's really underlying this entire appointment division, which is it's trying to parcel out appointments in a sort of logical, reasonable process, rather than just lumping them into one spot? And you know, so for CRC, you might say, look, the, the argument might be. They're already overwhelmed, and yes, now they're going to have some things taken off their plate, but you know, this is really a lot of work, so why don't we just have a committee that does appointments, or maybe just a committee that does planning and zoning board appointments, and that's it. Is there anyone? I mean, just, I'm playing devil's advocate, and you, I'm possible answer is you have no response. I, I mean, I think we go back to we originally had everything in GOL, um, and we flipped that out in response to some concerns that that was too concentrated, that it might be too much work for GOL, and so let's spread that out. And one of the things then in spreading out was, well, it makes sense then for the committee doing planning and zoning 
to be appointing to planning and zoning. Um, we could revisit that decision. But um, no, I, I do think given the amount of contact I've had with the planning board chair and looking forward, the amount of contact CRC will have with the planning board through zoning bylaw hearings, um, it to me almost makes some sense to have the CRC do those appointments in the end uh, because they will have a really good idea of what zoning is, uh, what the planning board, mm -hmm. and, and then similarly zoning does similar regulatory portions of planning board, um, what that job is like. Um, okay. uh, might have an idea of who's showing up at meetings in order to, if we have low applications, who we might be able to recruit um, and specifically reach out to. There, there may be some mm -hmm. synergies there that, that right. help that issue yeah. too. One of the concerns was raised, uh, as I recall, by one counselor, not on OCA, but from a different committee, a different counselor, about where parking should go. Can you talk about that briefly? Um, and in general, transportation. Um, right now, parking is located in CSO. Uh, can we just revisit those charges for a moment? Because um, I think the suggestion was that it should be in CRC. What's our argument or rationale for parking issues and transportation across the board and as to where it's going uh, in the charges? Because I had one counselor express concern about that. And my understanding, it was a very brief conversation, was this counselor wanted to move somewhere else, which I assume meant CSO, but maybe I'm wrong. I'm sorry, CSC. Okay, so it's in CSO. Um, do we want to split it? Do we want to keep it where it is? What's the rationale? Because I think there would be some concern about that. Yes, Evan, please. So I, uh, obviously this was part of my idea yeah, to move absolutely. it over. Right. And I, it's one, uh, while I'm certainly open to budging on a lot of things, this one I'm actually fairly firmly behind. Okay. And I think it's for uh, two reasons. Uh, one is municipal parking is a service um, provided to the community by the town. We reserve a certain amount of our public lands for us to park on, whether we like that or not. It's something that we do. Mm -hmm. um, and so if we are putting the commons in TSO, if we are putting parks and town facilities in TSO, which is the current proposal, it doesn't make sense to carve public lands that are reserved for parking out of that mm -hmm. because parking is a service. Um, public way, I mean, and, and it's not, we didn't, never, la I don't think, never labeled parking in TSO. It was public ways. And so it's only parking on public ways. So have stuff that has to do on private property or a, say a privately funded parking garage, that would still be in CRC. But it's those things that, re that are public ways because it's really about how we manage our public lands. Okay. The other side of the coin is this. If you looked at, and I know Mandy Jo did this at one point, what could be taken out of CRC mm -hmm. under this split, how the, the load would be lightened on CRC. A lot of that load lightening is because parking was taken out. And that's been a, a huge thing over um, the past several months. Mm -hmm. If you put parking back in, I actually, I don't think that takes a tremendous amount of work out of CRC. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it, it doesn't make sense rationally, and it also works against one of our objectives. Okay, good, good. What Mandy has suggested is that the charges as they are currently in our packets are um, basically acceptable to this committee and should be voted on today, which is something I'd very much like to do. Um, I also need to provide a rationale, and that's my job, and I may be consulting Evan at some point just to, to make sure my rationale fits with what um, that he's been shaping. But um, are there any concerns about any of the specific charges or any concerns that you've heard of from other councils? So I've mentioned one. Um, others of you may have heard others. Um, but obviously, we've not gotten back any uh, written comments um, about the charges other than a sense overall that people are happy with the idea of a split. 
Um, so we could move to adopting these charges today, and then I can, um, then the next step I think is for us to decide about appointments, and we were in the sense that it's in the charges, so um, we would have to perhaps subtract something uh, in terms of the recommendation <coughs> for phasing, if that's what we want to do. But let's, again, just focus on charges. Any, are we ready to move on these as they are written? Um, I have a question um, on the town services for TSO. Oh, it says review and make recommendation to the count, town council on measures that may affect the provision of services to the community by a town department. <coughs> Can you clarify the limits of that? So um, my, my understanding when I wrote this um, is the key word there is measures. And so the idea here is not that this committee would sit around and look at planning and go, you know, if you combine those two planning positions, that would be I inappropriate. Um, but if there's a measure that comes before us, so uh, a, a bylaw, it, it'd probably be a bylaw, right, mm -hmm. um, that is going to affect how a town department delivers services to the community, that would be. And so the example I keep using is the campaign finance bylaw, right? Yeah. That, the, that, that would affect the town clerk's office who deals with so that. And so that was a measure that affects that department and so it would go there. And so, um, you know, we, we could, could in theory write upon referral or something like that. Um, I don't necessarily no, think it's needed, but again, it, it's only to be, it's only to look at the provision of services by a town department in the context of a particular measure that's been proposed for the council to act on, which I think helps constrain it to the council's purview, and, and because I, there, it can be tricky there, right? Yeah. Making sure that the council does, this committee doesn't exceed the authority of the council itself. No, that that's helpful, and that's where I thought we were, but I I got some feedback about what are you going to be telling departments how they should behave? And, mm, I hope so. Yeah, no, I don't think so, but. So that's why I wanted the clarification. My understanding though, and I correct me here if I'm wrong, is that this would be the committee that um, citizens could come to for um, uh, what? For help, assistance, input, if they're having difficulty with town uh, departments. And again, I'm gonna try to get more engaged in my little story for instance, uh, you know, issues about parking or street signs or, or speed limits or that sort of thing. Wouldn't that naturally come to this committee for discussion? And wouldn't this committee be a place that I could send a constituent to and say, well, you should contact the chair of TSO? Um, or am I misconstruing what you're describing? I think that TSO would be the place, but I have more and more reservations after watching the Lincoln Avenue thing, um, which I can talk about now or. Uh, if it's not, it's just about Lincoln Park. Well, it's know, not about Lincoln, that, but, but that's, what's, yeah. yeah what's the issue? It's, it seems to me that there are credible reasons um, to change parking uh, on Lincoln Avenue. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying which way, you know, right. da, da, da. Um, I have had <laughs> constituents come to me or residents come to me with more frivolous uh, reasons mm -hmm. for changes. Mm -hmm. And what I'm concerned with is um, if <laughs> we're, what we're saying, the process so far is that if the town manager brings something forward, then we work with it. Um, yes. uh, we have a public hearing. And my concern is that not every resident's complaint is. Um, as important as it seems to that person. This actually is the item uh, later on the agenda. Yeah. Where we're going to talk about Yeah, that's process, what I thought. So I'd yeah. like to hold that off. That's process. absolutely fine. Here I just want to focus on the TSO charge and also the other two charges and get a sense from this committee that they're happy with what, and so you've raised a good question. Evan has answered it. Any other concerns with the language or so forth? Because when we, if we do vote on this and I send it to the, to the council, uh, they're going to go through this with a fine tooth comb. Now, 
we'll have Evan present, and he will be someone I will be turning to uh, as an assistant to make to make to deal with objections. But I need to present a clear rationale in the report. Um, so, if there are any other concerns or uh, changes you want to make, otherwise, I would entertain a motion to uh, adopt these three charges as written. Um, so we may still have a question about how to deal with uh, Brian Bridge and Deal and the appointment. So that's what I'm asking. Anything else for TSO? Um, let's just quickly look at all three TSO. Um, Evan has given us a, a clear rationale for keeping um, for uh, keeping parking. Now the word is not used here, right? And that uh, I'm sorry, and public ways is, is the point. And your feeling is let's leave it that way. Sorry, I'm just saying. Right, intentional decision on your part. And I, no, I understand. And I'm not hearing. Andy? So I think last week or whatever, I recommended that, and the discussion revolved around, but sometimes parking doesn't actually belong in TSO because it's not right. it change of sense. regulations right. and stuff like that. And so putting that word in there might restrict when you could send it to, say, CRC because it really deals with a land yeah. use. And that's the rationale that Evan's presented and will be presented to the council, and hopefully will be in the report. So we've met our criteria. Um, do we need? We don't need to make any changes with the appointments because we feel that we can go ahead with those right now. We're not worried about any kind of phasing in. Um, I have not heard much from anyone about outreach. No one seems to be objecting to putting it here. Um, and so I don't have anything to say about outreach to community relations. So I think do you want to do it uh, charge by charge, uh, Evan? Sorry. One yes. I think we should vote on each of these individually. Uh, two, this is so minor, but for a consistency perspective, I noticed, and I don't know if we have an adopted format or what's our own, I just noticed that in the Finance Committee charge, the charter references come outside the period, and in this one, and the ones I wrote, I put them inside the period. Yep. We should just pick one. I, we just adopted the finance charge, so we should probably just go, the okay. references come outside the period. Okay, all right, um, and that's a change you're willing, I mean, if any changes are made, Something you were willing to make? Yeah, I just noticed in the period, yeah. Um, I, can, I can do that. <laughs> I know you can. Um, it's just a question. Right. Um, so other than that, any other thoughts on this? Because I'm ready to entertain a motion. Mandy. So I tried to draft a comprehensive motion. That might work. For all, everything at once. Yeah. All right, then we have two suggestions. One is do it charge by charge, the other is do a comprehensive motion. Can I read it without yes. making the motion? Absolutely, so people hear can. what your suggestion <laughs> is, your suggested motion. Is to recommend the council do the following. Um, rescind the current CRC and GOL charges effective immediately. Adopt the TSO, CRC, and GOL charges as presented at the GOL 2-12-2020 meeting effective immediately except for the appointment responsibility for planning board and ZBA in the CRC charge and rescind all duties in the OCA charge except for making recommendations for appointments to planning board and ZBA. Appointment responsibility for planning board and ZBA shall remain in OCA until July 1, 2020 at which time the appointment responsibilities for those bodies shall shift to CRC as provided in the charge and OCA shall be dissolved. Well, it's, it's a mouthful. Um, Evan, your thoughts? It seems to me that this is... Yeah, I want to rescind my, my previous statement. I, I thought it made sense to vote on each individually. My, my concern now is whatever motion we passed here should be mirrored in the council and because these are all interrelated, it really needs to be an all or nothing. Mm -hmm. I would hate in the council for the TSO charge to pass and then the CRC charge to fail. Right. And then we're like, so what does that mean? So it, I think it actually has so to be a, a comprehensive motion. Proposal, but it does include a phasing in and um, this, this suggested motion, which I think at the moment a suggested motion does do that. Okay, now it would be nice to be able to see this up on the screen all right, um, we trust Mandy. Um, 
time. Good time. Um, does anyone else besides me need it to be reread one more time? Well, actually, it will be read one more time because it's going to be some explanation of the real motion. Um, so Evan has, has withdrawn his idea of creating it originally. It's just a thought that when it does go before the council, we would present it as a single comprehensive motion because we don't want parts being knocked out. And if the council is unwilling to do that, then our attempt has failed. Um, so that makes sense to me. So um, we have a motion. I'm open again to a motion to be disbanded. And Mandy has it in front of her. Now, we, we have only looked at the TSA. Make flight changes to finance. Well, that we just put forward separately, so that's not well, going to be the Finance is not a motion because we will replace the yeah. financial reporting with that financial reporting. So finance is not an option, right. but just the change in the TSO identity. Okay. Um, yeah. I only need one. I'll try to read it slow, too, but when I get an email connection, after my computer's updated. Right. I'll also <laughs> email it to you. New technology brand. Um, so it's all my fault. No. So um, I move to recommend the council do the following. Rescind the current Community Resources Committee and GOL charges effective immediately. Adopt the proposed town services and outreach charge, Community Resources Committee charge and governance organization and legislation charge as amended at the GOL 2-12-2020 meeting, mm -hmm. effective immediately except for the appointment responsibility for planning board and ZBA in the community resources committee charge and rescind all duties in the outreach communications and appointment charge except for making recommendations for appointments to planning board and ZBA. Appointment responsibility for planning board and ZBA shall remain in OCA until July 1, 2020, at which time the appointment responsibility for those bodies shall shift to CRC as provided in the charge and OCA shall be dissolved. You just made that motion. Second. We have a motion in front of us. It has been seconded. It is a complex motion, and it's got a lot of moving parts. And we may want to ask the clerk of the council to read it back to the clerk. What's your question? She doesn't have the whole thing. So you will email it to her when you have email? When I have access. I, I don't know what the current OCA charge says. I know this seems so minor. Can you just accept a friendly amendment to change the word recommendation for appointments to recommendations regarding appointments? Sure. And, and I can briefly explain the rationale. When I see recommendation for appointments, that sounds like it's just names. OCA also wants to recommend changes to the CAS. And I think that we could do that under the auspices of regarding appointments because it's part of the appointment process, if that makes sense. I want to make sure we retain the ability to, with it, to retain the authority to make recommendations on CAS because that's something we're going to be undertaking. Thank you. I will read it again. <laughs> to recommend the council do the following, rescind the current CRC and GOL charges effective immediately. Adopt the proposed TSO, CRC, and GOL charges as amended at the GOL February 12, 2020 meeting effective immediately except for the appointment responsibility for planning board and ZBA in the CRC charge. And rescind all duties in the OCA charge except for making recommendations regarding appointments to planning board and ZBA. Appointment responsibility for planning board and ZBA shall remain in OCA until July 1, 2020, 
at which time the appointments responsibility for those bodies shall shift to CRC as provided in the charge and OCA shall be dissolved. motion it has been seconded any further discussion what we envision in presenting this to council as a single motion and uh, with a uh, rationale presented in writing to the council by the chair and then we will do our best to defend it against any and all attacks um, but I feel that um, I'm, I'm, I'm proud. I'm, I'm very grateful to Evan for all the work he's done and also Mandy um, because I think this is what the council needs, at least in broad outline, and I hope we can convince our fellow councilors to do so, um, but we know that's, that's, that's in his hands. So, um, so unless there's any other further uh, encomia or uh, <laughs> that's just a mutual vote. All those in favor of the motion as presented, please signify by raising your hand and saying aye. 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 Four then and one absent. So four to zero with one absent uh, to accept this motion. Um, I would like to move for at least 15 minutes, maybe a bit more, but not much more, because we still have minutes to uh, also approve. It shouldn't take us long, because I think they're in great shape. But um, I'd like to talk for a few minutes about public ways requests. And so you have in your packet a, uh, a document from yours truly. And I think it raises, uh, and it's here simply for a point of discussion. I need your uh, input. So I'm basically presenting this as, this is what I would do if I were the emperor of Annie. Um, and it's not because it's the best or the right, but I just feel like we need something concrete to look at and then pick it to pieces and hopefully come up with something better um, or just abandon the, the, the cause. Because I think the council is, certainly the president is waiting. I think the council may be less so, waiting for an actual process. But I, I did feel like at Lincoln Park's discuss Lincoln Parking discussion that there was a greater sense of, of frustration that we don't have a process. And so I said at the meeting that we are working on a process. So um, this isn't all that different from other things I've sent you. Um, but it's basically here I'm just saying, OK, this is what I want to do. And I need you to, to tell me um, what needs to be, you know, does it jive? So um, somewhere in proposed process for public ways, do we need, we can take a, do people need a break here? Okay, all right. Um, and I'm going to present this with my thoughts and, um, and you should start making notes and, and uh, but we can stop as we go along. But the first thing, my first suggestion is that um, all public ways requests come through town hall. Um, and uh, so that any request that requires town council action uh, comes to us from town hall. So that um, any citizen that comes to us and says, I want to do this, that, and the other with parking and so on, you should say, well, I, I, this is my suggestion, you go to Bachelman and you say, this is a problem. Now, the councilor could go with them, which is what happened with Lincoln uh, Avenue. The two councilors went with and had a meeting with Bachelman, and um, that's up to the councilor. But the, the basic suggestion is go to town hall. Then, at that point, town hall does what it does. Um, I assume one would call, uh, I mean, he becomes sort of the, uh, the gate. And now, I think I need to run this by Paul as well, but it seems in the past that's pretty much been the way things work. Um, and if Paul decides to just ignore it or let it sit or just whatever, he can do that. Um, but if he sees it has merit, um, it usually goes to DPW and whatever, and they look at it. And eventually it goes through that and comes back to Paul. And if it involves the council, then he would then notify the chair, the president of the council that he has a proposal regarding a public ways request that requires town council action. At that point, the council president then would set a date for a public hearing because a public hearing is required. 
I do not think that it requires any action by the council. That's strictly up to the president. The president puts it on the agenda, and then the president sets the agenda and manages it. But the president doesn't have the option of not holding a public hearing for these requests because they are required. Um, so I thought what happened at the, so I, I'm just putting you my proposal out. What happened at the last meeting in, under my proposal would never happen again. Um, we obviously need to have materials in advance. Um, again, but this is, you know, this is the way the world works, right? I'd really get it, what, 48 hours, uh, you know, 36 hours. I, I mean, I, we can pick a number. But at some point, it comes into our packet. We're supposed to read it. It comes to uh, the public hearing because we're ready to. And the only person, the only party that's making a proposal is the uh, town manager of staff. There are, I mean, I originally envisioned duly proposing. And the actual process that we have at the moment in our rules of procedure um, does not have a place for that, and, and I think that's just not appropriate. So town staff presents the proposal, and there is time for public comment. So I would assume what would happen at the Lincoln Parking hearing is that um, the proposal would be made by the town staff. We have materials in our packet. Then it would be open for public comment. And people would come forward and say yay, say no, da 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 And then we decide. But there would only be one proposal, and that proposal would come from town staff. Um, at that point, the public hearing, there, and again, I could use help here in terms of what options I'm missing, but basically the options at that point, we either vote it up or down, we, pr we approve this proposal or we don't approve it. We could, uh, I, I guess in theory, a council could offer a proposal of their own. I'd like to strike that, but that's possible, I guess. We could continue the hearing, and usually that would mean that we need further information from town staff. Those, it seems to me, are the only options. Now, that's the end of the process as I envisioned it. Um, because I believe that at this point, you know, if, uh, right, if someone brings a proposal to town hall and nothing happens, someone might say, then what do we do? And it seems to me that it's time for us to do our job. Okay? We are the ones who then have to, to sort of look into it and report back to our constituents. And in some truth, we could even you know, bring it before the council and say, okay, there's just an issue in our neighborhood and it's been before town staff for umpteen months and they haven't done anything and I think we need to do something. So, but that seems to me is a political uh, issue that is resolved through the process of the council doing its work. There, shouldn't, there isn't some special process that, right? So this is my suggestion. Everything comes to uh, the uh, through uh, town hall um, and the town manager does his job, and when he finally has a proposal that requires town council action, he notifies the council president. The council president puts it on the agenda, and um, we get the materials X days in advance, and then we have a public hearing. And at the public hearing, we have these options, and then we're done. So, help. I like it, but <laughs> what I'm concerned with, uh, I agree about doing our jobs as counselors. Um, but because a request has gone in to the town manager, he, he has or that information. He, if he makes a decision by himself or with uh, department heads or whatever that it shouldn't see the light of day, it's right. not valid, then, there, then he needs in some way to report to the constituent, to the resident who's making the complaint. Because not every, I'm, I'm never going to get elected to anything again, not every resident complaint is valid. Right. And I feel like we need to have some way of setting some limits about what actually um, requires action. And either we're going to tr um, trust town manager and DPW or um, or we're not, or we are going to find a consistent pattern of lack of response from DPW. I'm making that up. Um, so yes, we need to move forward doing our job, right. but that might include saying to a resident, we've looked at this, the police have looked at it, it does not need to be changed. I understand why you would like it to be changed, but you know what? I, I, I just say, I yeah. think really the question is the follow through when something is not uh, 
dealt with. Well, so then, I, and I, uh, that's one, we could say we would, you know, trade sit or, or you know, uh, oversee the special use responses strategy. And that's a, certainly, a, I think that's a plausible option. Whether that goes into a process, I'm not so sure, but it could. Um, another response would be that's the council's job. So, you know, the president brings something and it doesn't see the light of day. The council then, you know, says, I want to see Paul. You go to Paul and you say, Paul, what's going on? And Paul hopefully will tell you. Or uh, he'll put you in, in touch with the, the particular person on staff who said, this is why it's not going anywhere. And then you would then pass that on to the investor. Um, and if you were not satisfied by the answer, if you felt that there's still, you, you could take it before a C CSO, or you could even bring it to the council and say, I think we need to do something about this. But the idea of putting it into a process, so part of the, see, we, we just need a process that we as council know is what we follow to win this fight. And I'd like us to keep, I would like to keep us out of this as much as possible for any number of reasons. Um, but, and of course, councils as individuals to act as counselors. Um, you know, your constituent has a problem and they're not getting any response, then you need to step in. And it might be you have an unpleasant boss who's going to say, uh, Mr. and Ms. X, and say, okay, here's why they're not gonna act. And in fact, I think that it's legitimate. And if they're not happy, they're not happy. But I hear, hear you that people need to know what happened. And when they don't learn what happened, they just die, that's not good. So I think now with a new form of government, part of our job is to, if something dies, is to find out why and communicate that to the constituent rather than put it into a process where Paul has to add to the list of many things to do is respond to X, Y, and Z when nothing happens. Now we could, we could say that we expect the town manager to notify residents who make a request, a public works request, uh, what the disposition is. And that's not completely unreasonable. I, I would want to run that by Paul and see what his thoughts are, but we could say that that would be part of you know, the process. But I guess the controversial issue here, or one issue here, is who's the gatekeeper? And one, some towns and cities do have a, a special committee that deals with all this stuff. And we could create that, or a CSO could create a, a subcommittee, or CSO could take it on. But I'm, I'm pressing you for the time to speak to, uh, you know, we have enough to do. Um, but we could decide, and you may, some of you may feel this makes sense, to have a special, you know, uh, committee of the council, or a subcommittee, whatever, ad hoc, whatever, um, that deals with these kinds of resident parking requests. So we would, the vast majority of these requests were dealt with, we, we do not vote on whether we're going to have a public hearing on, uh, on a Verizon, uh, right? This is ridiculous. But apparently for parking or neighborhood requests, we have to have a vote as to whether we're going to have a public hearing. And I think that's just, I have a problem with that. Um, if it merits a public, if it merits a, a town proposal, it gets a public hearing. Um, and we don't get to decide whether it does or doesn't. It comes from the town. Um, so, well, so I'm saying the gatekeeper is the town manager and staff, but if there is a problem, then it's the job of the councils to get involved, and there are various ways they can do that, um, including ultimately bringing it before the council itself. Um, so that's my suggestion. I know you can hear this from when I, I addressed the town planning, because uh, I really would like to get this at some point seen in front of the council, and your training potentially would be helpful because then we can get a stronger, but um, there are options, uh, different from this. Um, I just don't think it makes sense for us to get into it. Stay out of this. pretty much agree. So in reading this, I have a few recommendations. Um, for the first one, um, in theory, everything requires town council action because it's a public way. Um, so I would clarify that to say something like as required by the town council policy regarding the control and regulation of the public ways or the general bylaw 3.14 um, to clarify, you know, this does not apply to the things we've already hand it off to the town manager, those one day temporary, this is anything that we'd have to finally vote on. Um, on the second point, um, so the second sentence that has the based on the recommendations, mm -hmm. 
or responses, the town manager prepares a report to the council with recommendations, mm -hmm. I would add. And then, and here's where I start adding stuff. Good. Thank you. <clears throat> if making a recommendation to alter the public way, because that would be what requires the vote, right. they notify the council president that a hearing must be set. Um, if needed, we can add the if needed or whatever, because mm -hmm. some of them might not actually need a hearing. Mm -hmm. um, if the town manager is not making a recommendation to alter the public way, so if they got that complaint and it's like, no, we're not doing that, um, or we're not making that recommendation, mm -hmm. then the person making the request shall be notified that that is the recommendation to not do anything, mm -hmm. essentially. and. Mm -hmm then has, that person then has the option to comply with charter requirements for petitioning the council. Um, so just put right in there that if they're mm -hmm. not happy with the manager's recommendation, they kind of go to where our resolution solution was, which was if you can't find a council sponsor, you gotta petition us. Um, you know, you gotta follow the charter requirements. If you can't get the town manager on board with a change, you gotta petition the council. Mm -hmm. um, okay. You know, I think that the, I, I liked that the town manager prepares a report to the council. Since this is ultimately a council decision and we're passing off much of it, I think any time a request is made for a permanent alteration or whatever we would have to act on, we should get a report on what that recommendation is so that we know what's been made. Similar to why we require the town manager in, their, in his monthly reports um, bi-weekly reports to indicate what he's granted on the temporary basis so that we know what's going on so that it wouldn't die there. We would see, oh, we got this, we did our investigation and we're saying no or we're saying yes. And then that report can also then be forwarded. Frankly, that, that's what my thing about <clears throat> notification, he can just send that report on to him and say we're not recommending anything. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Number five. Yep. <clears throat> I would also get rid of offer a proposal on its own. Thank you. Um, but I would add in, refer the proposal to a council committee for right. study and recommendation. Yes. Because that's where a potential alternate proposal could be mm -hmm. discussed, made, and done all of that too. Okay. Good. Very good. Um, any other? Yeah, Evan, please. Uh, so three things off the top of my head. So one... I think a critique you're going to get, although not necessarily from me, is the council is the keeper of the public way, mm -hmm. and this seems to uh, give a whole lot of power to the town manager over something that right. is technically, and, and I know we got that criticism, um, if not in debate, I've heard it from other councilors on our public ways policy, that it Give, it delegates too much power to the town manager over something that the council technically has control over. Right. Um, I don't know that I necessarily agree with that, and I'm all for giving us less work. Um, but I, I do think that y you should, right. we, if you're when you when you are presenting this to the town council, right. I know at least one councilor who will say, "Are we even keepers of the public way, really? If all we're doing is the vote?" Um, to the two other things, with um, one is. As you know, I've been sort of a pain about this link. I'm, I'm the minority on this community, uh, on this committee when it comes to how the council proceeded with uh, the Lincoln Ave. And what was perpetually, I don't know if that's the right word, what was my real issue when I started thinking about why it was, wasn't was sitting with me mm -hmm. was the idea of having a published public hearing out there for a proposal that I hadn't seen. And the discomfort I had with a poten the potential of a constituent coming to me and saying, What's this public hearing about? And not knowing. And specifically for the Lincoln Ave one, I, I was really appreciative, and this is a point that I will absolutely be making during the public hearing, of the person who brought up the fact that the people who are parking on that street are likely faculty, staff, and students who cannot afford to park on campus, and that is a way for them to park. And I would love for those people to be able to have a voice in what's being proposed, but it would be literally impossible for them to have such a voice if we didn't know until five days before the hearing what was actually being mm -hmm. proposed. Mm -hmm. And so with regard to number two, and, and Mandy, you may have said this, I wasn't, it's hard to hear and not see what you're writing, um, but it, it says the town manager pre prepares a report to the council and notifies the council president that a public hearing date must be set. There's actually nothing in there that says that the report has to be given to the council. It just says he prepares a report. And so I'd like some stipulation that the council needs to receive that report and recommendation 
at the latest when the public hearing is set so that the moment a public hearing is scheduled, the council knows what the proposal is. And so the, the point four, the council shall have all relevant materials at least X days, that's fine. There's gonna be additional materials that we wanna have in advance, but I wanna get that report. I don't ever want a public hearing to be scheduled without me having that report and recommendation. And, I, and actually, I think that's true for everything. I mean, I, I, it makes me uncomfortable that even some of these non-controversial ones from Eversource or Verizon, that I'm walking into a public, that the public hearing may be scheduled weeks in advance and I have no idea what's actually being proposed. Um, and so if we're requiring him to make a report and recommendation, I just wanna clarify that the council has to receive that before or at the posting of the public hearing. Mandy? But I had actually, as we were talking, or modified it to X days before the public hearing to X days before the public hearing notice is published, okay. um, including the manager's report. I think that if we add in, including the manager's report, you know, that it's before it's published, whether it's one day before it's published or three days or whatever, that that those that makes more sense than before the hearing when it's been published for three weeks and we get it three days in advance for your exact reason. And that would address what's been my primary concern with what was happening with the Lincoln White Park request. So, so let's just from just from using this example, um, what would have happened or what you would like to have happened um, would be that once uh, Paul was ready to um, move forward, he had an actual uh, proposal. Um, that and a report sort of describing the whole, just help me here, what, what is it? So something, some document from Paul would need to be in your hands before a public notice is put and that's 14 days, right, before the public hearing. You want to have at least a report, if not the proposal? Uh, just help me here. What is it that you want? I, I think, I mean, if you're at a point, to, right. to me, right. if you're at a point where you are ready to schedule a public hearing, you should already have all the documents together. Right. Like, it, to me, it, it would be, it would be ridiculous to say, let's schedule the public hearing, but we still need a couple of weeks to work out the details of the proposal. Then you're not ready for the public hearing. And so there should, and right. this is this is a lot of my confusion We're in that meeting on January 27th, where Paul was being very secretive. Of, he kept, he, all he kept saying was, a proposal exists, but then he wasn't telling us what it was. And I thought to myself, does a proposal exist? Or do you have do you have the outlines of a proposal in your head, in which case we're not ready to schedule something? Because yeah, so I, I think that could we add a little more language? Because it says here that the council has identified the scheduling of the public hearing date must be set in advance. And uh, I'm putting in there that the report is reviewed for that date and adopted. Well, I just, first of all, I'm just trying to get clear the difference between the report and the proposal, or whether there is any difference. Are these simply the same document, or are you are they imagining two different documents? It sounds like you're imagining one document yeah. that once it's, it's, it's finished or ready, then um, it should be available to the council, and then uh, the public hearing date should be set. To, to, to me, the language is proposal or recommendation. I don't, I, I don't understand report necessarily. Um, well, I guess it'd be proposal and or recommendation because the recommendation could be take no action. Um, a recommendation to move forward on something should be accompanied by a proposal. I think we might get hung up on the word report because I think if we're saying there's a recommendation, a report, and a proposal, the town manager's gonna say, so no, we need what, to what, goes, clear. what goes in the report? We, we need to be clear on what we want from him and we need to be clear that uh, I'd like to have him on board something for him and, um, so if he has objections or concerns we need so we're clearly not going to get this ready for the next and that's fine but this is very helpful to me just like Mandy will probably send me her document I hope she will um, because and, and I will continue to refine it and I, in the interim I will uh, with, with permission of my colleagues reach out to Paul and say this is where we think we're headed um, what are your concerns what are your uh, worries um, but I'm getting clearer sense now from Evan, which I didn't have before, um, of the desire, and it seems not an unreasonable one, 
to before we actually set a public hearing. Now, I guess the one concern is, look, they, and I think you'd be appalled too, I would imagine saying, look, there's things like Eversource and, and, and utilities and so on. Um, these come, sometimes they come, uh, sometimes they may come with a, some sense of time urgency, um, where if the things you're talking about, Lincoln and so on, you know, they're not that time urgent. Um, is that gonna be an issue? In other words, you may say, look, uh, it's a great idea, but in reality, uh, these things sometimes just come and, and you have to act fairly quickly. Um, I don't know. You're expecting, I guess what I'm saying quickly is that you're expecting that, that even the Eversource and the Verizon material, at least for some of those in advance, will be able to public hearing. T t and, and maybe I'm being naive here. No, no, no. I personally can't imagine anyone setting a public hearing date without having the propo proposal in front of them. Not just the council, but the town mayor. I, 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 Excuse me for jumping in. <clears throat> the, the bylaw states that in order to send notice to abutters, we have to have the exact proposed re regulation. So the notice to abutters that I'm sending on to residents on Lincoln Avenue has the exact wording of the regulations that are being proposed. I think that's something that you might want to consider when you're making this process. If you want to include people other than direct abutters, like people who use that public way for other purposes. Mandy? And so I, I was going to address the Eversource and all. Uh, the clerk's office or Athena gets an actual letter. You saw most of that in the packet. They right. get that, and then in general, they mention it to Lynn that says, we got this, we need to hold a hearing, and all when she puts that on the agenda and schedules that hearing, you don't always have at that time the DPW or the fire department's yeah, exactly. recommendation yeah. on that, but that's also, that hearing is required by state law under some statutory provisions, right. some of those, right. not our bylaws or our public ways proposal. So there's some, you know, there's, there's some leeway on that, but when they send it, it's pretty much the document you saw yesterday so that's in hand even if the managers uh, and the you know the fire department or police chief's so recommendation is not so it's, it's, i guess what i'm looking for then is before or at the moment of the posting i would like to be able to see the proposal mm -hmm. and that goes for everything right because i i feel uncomfortable anytime a public hearing has been scheduled and I, and i don't know what it's about other than verizon public way request because if there's ever a situation where a constituent asks, I have nothing to tell them. And certainly the town has the letter, the proposal before the public hearing scheduled. And it, it, to me, and maybe it is, but it doesn't seem unreasonable for the public hearing to be scheduled and then that letter to just be sent to town council at amherstma.gov. Okay, so what I'm hearing, uh, this is all very helpful and it will, we'll, uh, we'll produce another version of this because uh, we're not ready, I, I think, at all. We don't have time to move forward. Again, any other thoughts from, from if you would like to add on it, please? So the last one is um, the first bullet, uh, vote up or down on the town proposal, right. feels a little too black and white for right. me. Thanks. So I'm thinking in terms of the Lincoln Ave one, voting up or down either means, yes, we're gonna do this proposal, or no, we're not. But in theory, we should be able to say, you know what, we agree with the proposal from Amity to North Hadley, but we actually don't agree with it from oh, Northampton to Amity. And mm -hmm. so we're gonna adopt a part. And so up and down seems like all or nothing. Mm -hmm. And so I agree the we shouldn't offer a proposal of our own. Like we shouldn't be able to say, eh, you did all that work, but how about instead we do one way down Lincoln and that solves the problem, which I think it could, um, right? But, but we should be able to say, we, are, we will adopt these parts of it, but not these parts so of it. So we could amend, we can, for a proposal. The wording up or down sounds so very right, all or I nothing. Would, right. So right. I would also reorder those bullet points. Please, um, go ahead. I mean, start with continue the public hearing because you can't do anything until you've closed the public hearing. Right. So if you're going to continue it, that's, that's your first decision. Okay. Um, and if you don't continue it, then I would put request further information next, then refer the proposal, and then vote on the proposal. Okay. Put the vote last, because that should be, you know, sort of put it in the order it would kind of mm -hmm. happen. Thank you. That would be very helpful. Um, 
So what I'm hearing here is that, that um, the committee would like to go forward on this, but we still need to do some work on it. So I can tell the council president that we've made good progress and I can even share with her a little bit of what we're thinking. Um, so she has some idea of where we're headed, but we're not ready to make any kind of formal proposal. And I can reach out to the town manager, people I know from you, and give him a sense of where we're headed and see what his thoughts are. Okay, good. Um, we don't have much time, but I, I'd like us to keep move on the minutes. Um, but before we do that, um, we do have this issue of bylaws. Evan has very kindly put a document in our packet that gives at least the chair some, at least the committee a sense of of how we might begin to parcel this out. We don't have time, I think, today to really think or see things through that, but we will uh, certainly have it on the agenda next time. Yeah, and, and Evan has done a very good job. I think the more important question, again, I'm not sure we have much time on it today, is how we want to proceed with what at times can be, such as we have a bylaw uh, before us today on the agenda that we're not going to really get to. So we might just look at that for a moment, but the, the question is how are we going to proceed with these more complex um, bylaws? Do we want to assign a member of the committee to sort of be the, uh, the manager of it um, and, and to sort of present it? Do we want to do what we did today, which is we have the document in front of us and we kind of wordsmith it? I thought today this was very productive, but for bylaws, it's, we're not really doing that. Um, there's, a, there's some homework or background might need to be done. There might be need to uh, get some legal opinion. Do you want that to be handled by the chair? Do you want to, uh, to a degree that we'll sort of parcel it out? You know, one person gets this bylaw, one person, person gets that. Or do you want to just have us do it as a group? We have a bylaw in front of us today. We can just start working our way through it. That seems terribly inefficient, and it, it would be helpful to have someone sort of the manager of each bylaw who's done maybe a little bit more preparing and a little bit more thinking about it. Um, so I'm open to suggestions here. Um, if we just for a moment open that particular bylaw and take a look at it, um, how would we proceed with something like this? Um, and has, has anyone given any thought to this? Because I haven't given a great deal of thought to it, except as maybe sort of like Evan opening it up and going, oh my God, you know, how are we going to deal with this? Um, we're able to deal with Evan, but the others seem a bit more daunting, and we've got a whole bunch coming down the road. So just briefly, what are some thoughts, or do you want to maybe leave this for next time? What are some thoughts about how to proceed in general with, um, you know, percent, take a percent for our bylaws? Um, do we just go through it line by line? Do we have someone sort of be the, the sort of take us through it, manage the manager of the bylaw? How do we want to do it together? So I haven't given this a whole lot of thought, um, but the first thing that jumps out to me that we sort of touched on with the last one is when what does and does not trigger attorney review. Um, and so to me, any process that we use, the first question we need to ask is, does this need to go to town attorney? Because it doesn't make sense for us to do anything right. um, on it until it goes to town attorney. And so what that also requires is um, asking the sponsors if it already has gone through attorney review and if it has, if they could send us that relevant information. So um, thinking back again, Mandy Joe and I put our campaign finance bylaw through attorney review. We didn't actually give you that information, which in retrospect, we probably should have, right? <laughs> it would have, it would have, like we sent it to the town attorney, they sent back feedback and we went, great, and then we sent you the bylaw, but we didn't send you the feedback. And so maybe you didn't even know that it had attorney review. And if we didn't know, and Mandy, Joe, and I weren't here, we might have sent it back to the attorney. And so I don't, I severely hope this percent for our bylaw has already gone through some attorney review, but this seems like something ad hoc committee should have done, but maybe they did it. And so like my first question looking at this is, has the town attorney already looked at that? If so, can you send us their response? And if not, we need to send it out. And so. The process beyond that, I have no idea. But um, that to me seems like the first step of the information we need. So I agree wholeheartedly. I think our first question is, do we want an attorney to review something? Because if so, we need to get it out. Even if there's changes we already see that need done that are more consistent changes type things, we need to get that language out to the attorney because it takes the attorney a while. Um, so that's the first one. Looking at this one, 
Um, it's not even formatted the way our current bylaws are formatted. Um, it uses section one, section two for the big ones, and our bylaws now use A's, B's, C's for the big ones. You know, it, there's certain things that we can easily see. Uh, Athena's raising her hand. The question I think we asked this committee is, is that our job or is that the job because it's supposed to be proposed by our rules in a format that can be adopted? Is it our job to flag it and change it or is it our job to just flag it and then say, oh, clerk, when it goes in, if it gets adopted, here's changes that need made in terms of the, the sort of, you know, what it, outlining of it. I mean, that's an outline structure, right? And Athena was raising her hand over here. You know. um, part of what Jeff sent after the bylaw bylaws were passed was a document to help the town clerk reformat new bylaws that are adopted. So that'll be part of the town clerk's responsibilities. I think it might be somewhere in the bylaws, but um, that's going to be part of what the town clerk does when new bylaws are added. So we would flag so things that eventually, and you would. You wouldn't even really need to make changes. She would just incorporate the new formatting into okay. the the adopted the new adopted bylaw. Or if there were changes, she would format them. Does that answer that question? Does that answer your question? So we have legal question, we have formatting question, formatting question's been answered, but what do we do with the rest of this? Um, and how do we approach it? Um, Mandy. So, so I, I'm just thinking, in terms of bylaw review, our jobs are clear, consistent, and actionable. Mm -hmm. So actionable gets, gets the sort of town, partially the town attorney. That's yeah. one of the, that's the purpose of that review. Clear, is us, I guess, can it be read and understood. Mm -hmm. um, consistent is, there's the outlining consistency, but then there's the who's doing the investigation to see if it's consistent with our town policies. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's where, <laughs> where we can start and maybe it gets assigned to, uh, you were saying something like assign someone on this committee to do something. Maybe that's the assignment on a person's level as these come through is are there any bylaws, you know, are, th are there other bylaws that this affects? You know, is it consistent with them? You know, is it, are there other policies of the town, whether it be the master plan or, you know, our climate action goals or this mm -hmm. that they're consistent with, you know, and, and all, maybe that's where our mm -hmm. review has a purpose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As no. you would say earlier today no, no, is, no, is that consistency with current town bylaws or resolutions or policies, stuff like that. So I thought might, you might assign a member um, to that. Um, the attorney takes care of actionable, right? No, right. And, and clarity is us as a, as a um, group, as a, as a committee. And so that would be homework. In other words, the assumption is that, that all, obviously all agree, that we take the time before we meet to redo the form um, from the point of view of uh, clarity. With this particular document, uh, what is the chair's task? Is he in this case to um, bring this to to us to start the formal review? Is he to first reach out to the sponsors, uh, which now is the CRC committee? Who is it? Well, I would say it's the ad hoc ad group. Hoc, right. Reach out to them and ask them if they haven't. Can we look at it? If they haven't, then I need to reach out to Paul and, 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 and look. I just can tell by the time, but um, I can't. Um, and we're going to do this every single bylaw, or we're going to make a judgment with each bylaw whether it needs a change or not. And that's why I kind of wanted to go through an attorney again, just to make sure they got yeah. everything. Yeah. And, and that's the thing, it might have gone, right? Right, so we need clarity on that, and I, I need to contact the next two heads. And if it turns out it does need a formal review, then um, I should ask uh, as soon as possible and, and try to get that started. Um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna tell the attorney, Other than just look at this and make sure you get it started. Right. Can we ask 
Yeah, okay. Um, and hopefully that will be sufficient. They might come back and say, well, what exactly are you? But okay. We, we, we You're were a lawyer. When we were in bylaw review, we identified, I think it was six bylaws that we were like, oh, I don't know, this makes us uncomfortable. And we literally just sent them to town attorney and said, can you give us an opinion? And um, they actually gave us like line edits on them. And so it depends on how much time they have. Um, but it, it was perfectly fine to just say, can you give us an opinion on sure. this? All right. So um, we'll do that. Um, so we have obviously going to act on this uh, today. Hopefully we'll be able to act on it next time we meet. Um, how are we doing? Yes, go ahead, Amanda. For purposes of going into agenda setting, I'm putting my vice president hat on now. Yep. Um, I think the president had mentioned at our last meeting on Monday that she hoped to put this on the February 24th agenda or whatever. Yeah. So uh, are, are we, can, can I report to her in an hour and a half? No, it's not going to be ready. I mean, that, I mean, that's a question from GOL. If we haven't reported it out yet, can it go in for first reading? And I'm not sure, I, I personally am not necessarily comfortable with that um, on a bylaw, especially if we're seeking attorney opinion. Um, but I think that's, as a committee, we should have an, an yeah. idea of whether we're okay with a first reading before we have ourselves finished our reporting out. Consulting the attorney would seem to be appropriate in many cases. And if that is true, then many of these bylaws are really an open gap. I would step away from them and think that it's completely open here. And there's just some way around it that somebody else can help them kind of so they can just bypass the whole um, opaque concept. And they can't do that just because there's no law in place. Evan? So I. So I guess um, a couple of things. I think uh, this, much like the first time we reviewed ECAC's charge, is going to be a process of figuring out what our role is as we actually do it. Yep. But I do think that Pat and I, having served a year on bylaw review committee, I'm already thinking of this almost in the terms of what Pat and I did on bylaw review committee. Yep. Yep. Whereas we looked at it and just and there were times where we said this is overly complex. We need to simplify it. There were times where we said you know that you know this is aspirational and unenforceable and so it shouldn't be there I, to me that's sort of our our view it, we're not going to be able to get into some of the technical details but we can look at some of those aspects um one thing i was going to say so I, my assumption is after you leave here today you will be emailing paul to ask for attorney opinion um give them a deadline uh that we did that on bylaw review um if you sometimes they can be pretty quick um Sometimes they're not. It depends on their workload. Uh, so what would be an appropriate deadline? Uh, by, our, by our next meeting. By our next meeting, okay. Um, give it maybe, so our next meeting's the 26th, mm -hmm. right? So it'll be the 24th. So that gives them time to get it in and then us to receive it, put it in the packet and read it. But honestly, the, um, the town attorney is the most busiest during town meeting times and we're not, we're, we're getting close and so if we if we say yeah you know when you get to it and they put it off and all of a sudden we like start to get into town meeting season but if you give them a deadline they can sometimes turn it around pretty quick i think with this one there's a sense of it's been sitting around so we would like to push it forward if we can maybe with others we're not part of that process so um we are blessed by having two members uh this body who have served on the bylaw review committee that's going to be very helpful Eventually, what I'm hearing is we're going to craft a process that eventually we'll probably put in writing that future members of this uh, body can use as a guideline, but at the moment we don't have it, but we thought it's a good idea today. Um, the only other item I have, so, um, is the uh, minutes, and I would like uh, to adopt them if we could. We have two sets of minutes in front of us. I've looked at both of them. I'm satisfied with this, but I need to hear from the rest of you in terms of consensus. Consensus is deeply want to make, and are you willing to uh, move by consensus that these are uh, can be accepted without change? And 
save that. So um, I will pass that along to, to uh, Clerk of the Council that these are uh, have been adopted by consensus. All right. Um, we still need at some point, we're not going to do it now, to work our way through Evan's document and think about how we're going to proceed with the general process of bylaw review. But we've made some good headway, I think, with at least thinking about that today. Um, I have nothing not, uh, not anticipated, and there is no public presence. Are there any other items that we um, that we want to bring up before we go on the air? Okay. Um, I have my homework set for me, um, and uh, the report I will be giving to the council at our next meeting. Um, how can I can I share? I mean, I, I'm obviously an open meeting law. Um, in the past, Evan, when you've done this, or Mandy, when you've done this, um, any way to share this with? Uh, I'm thinking of thinking of, of Evan, who spent so much time on this. Is appropriate for me to share that with him if he wishes to work on it. Is that a ready to work here? Is that a problem? As long as we're hearing from another person, it is. Not that he, he didn't yeah, have to it is your it. discretion okay. to do so, as long as we don't assign it to more than one person. Yeah, I'm not going to assign it to anybody. It's my job to write it, but I mean, if I do choose to share it with someone. So I'm prepared to adjourn this meeting. Thank you all. And uh, thank you out there in Peter Land.